Hello friends, welcome to Preschool Unplugged with Head Start, brought to you by Child Start and its Head Start program. Explore stories and learning activities for our youngest friends. Child Start and KPTS, collaborating to make learning fun. Welcome to Miss Marissa's Singing Corner. I'm so happy that you're here today and I hope that you are ready to sing. To get started, I want to start with a song to welcome you all here with me. If you know it, you can go ahead and sing with me and if not, you can listen with your ears, okay? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine and I hope you are too. I hope you are too today. Welcome friends. I hope you enjoyed that first song. And next, we are gonna talk about our ABCs and sing them. And to help me today, I have cards that are gonna have the letters on them as we sing. So come on, let's get started. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Good job, friends. That sounded great. Did you guys happen to see the letter that your name starts with? Should we go through one more time and you can keep an eye out for that? Let's try it. I bet you guys can spot them. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Awesome. Did you see the letter that your name starts with? I did. Well, thanks for seeing the ABCs with me. Next, we're going to sing a song about monkeys. Do you guys know that monkeys, they swing in trees? So we're going to use our hand and fingers to do some actions with our song, okay? And we're going to have five different verses. One, two, three, four, five. So if you don't know it, you can listen on the first verse and then join in on the next one, okay? All right. Five little monkeys swinging in a tree, teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snatched the monkey right out of the tree. Four little monkeys swinging in a tree, Teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snatched the monkey right out of the tree. How many monkeys are left, you guys? I see one, two, three. Three monkeys are left. Three little monkeys swinging in a tree. Teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. 
Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and <coughs> snatched that monkey right out of the tree. Two monkeys left. One, two. Two little monkeys swinging in a tree. These and Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snatched that monkey right out of the tree. How many monkeys do we have left? That's right, just one. Ready? One little monkey swinging in a tree. These and Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be, and snatched that monkey right out of the tree. All of our monkeys are gone. I think we should end with one last song, and it might be a song that some of you already know. So you can go ahead and sing with me, okay? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Yay! That was so good. I heard you guys singing and you have beautiful voices. Thanks for joining me today in Miss Marissa's Singing Corner and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye. Hello friends. Welcome back to Botanica the Wichita Gardens with me, Miss Laurel. Today we are out in the Chinese Garden of Friendship in front of one of my favorite trees. And we are going to talk a little bit more about my number one favorite insect, the honey bee. Now, in a previous episode, we visited the bee house and we talked a little bit about the members of the hive. Today, we are going to learn all about honeybee anatomy. But for me to help you learn all about the body parts of an adult honeybee, I needed a little help from one of my Botanica friends. <clears throat> and we are going to turn her into a honeybee to help you learn about the anatomy of a bee. Now, honeybees, like many other insects, do change completely, just like the butterfly we've talked about before, from the beginning of their lives to the end. We are going to build a grown-up adult honeybee. Now, they are an insect, so they share the same body parts that many adult insects do, so we'll talk about that a little bit too three main body parts on an adult insect, head, thorax, and abdomen. Now, here on the thorax, that's where all the working parts are. On the back of her thorax, she needs some wings. An adult honeybee has four. So count them with me as I put them on her. We have one wing, two, three, last one is Four. Now let's hope she doesn't fly away. On the front of the thorax, she has more moving parts. She has her legs. Now, do you know how many legs an adult insect has? Six. Let's count them and make sure she has that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six legs that classifies her as an insect. The lower part of her body is called the abdomen. You have an abdomen too. We are going to add those honeybee stripes on her abdomen. And then my Botanica friend is a female bee. So she is either a worker bee or a queen bee. So she has one more special body part down at the bottom of her abdomen. Do you know what this is? It's her stinger. Okay, let's finish her off. A little something on her head. What does an insect need on top of their head? She needs some antennas. Right there are her two antennas. And an adult honeybee has, believe it or not, five eyes. So one, two, three, four, five eyes. There she is, doesn't she look beautiful? Now, I have a little song that you can sing with me 
to help you remember that an adult honeybee has three main body parts as do other adult insects, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Now, you'll know what this song is and you'll be able to join me. It goes like this. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and on the head, five eyes, two antennas. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. You've got it. There is our adult honeybee. Thank you for joining me here in the gardens again today, friends. Until next time, bye-bye. Hi guys, it's Miss Kayla, and today I'm going to show you how to sign some sports in sign language. Are you ready? All right, so the first sign is baseball. So pretend that you're grabbing onto the baseball bat and you're going to swing it twice. Baseball, baseball. Good, pretend that there's the ball right in front of you and you're going to swing it. Baseball, baseball, good. All right, the next sign is football. Football, football. So you're taking both hands and the palms are facing towards you and you're going to bring them together. Football, football, good. So the next sign is soccer, soccer, soccer. So pretend that there's a soccer ball right here and you're going to pick it. Soccer, soccer, good. Next sign is dance. So pretend your left hand is the stage and then your right hand has two legs on top of the stage and they're going to go side to side. Dance. That's how you sign dance in sign language. Good job, you guys. Tennis. What you'll do is you'll make the letter T in sign language and pretend that your hand is a tennis racket and you're going to swing it. Tennis. Good. Tennis. Bowling. Pretend that you are holding a bowling ball and you're going to roll it. Bowling. Bowling. Good. Have you guys ever been bowling before? Volleyball. What you're going to do is you're going to flick your middle fingers up. Volleyball. Volleyball. So your middle fingers are touching your thumbs and then they're going to flick up. Volleyball. Volleyball. Good. The next sign is swimming. So pretend that you are in a pool or in a lake and you're going to move your arms like you're pretending that you are swimming. Swimming, good. Do you guys like to swim? Yeah, do you guys swim in the summer or do you swim in the winter? That's right, people swim in the summertime because the weather is warm and the water is warmer too. The next sign is basketball. So pretend that you are holding a basketball and you're going to shoot it into the hoop. Basketball, basketball. Good, this is Miss Kayla's favorite sport, basketball. Do you guys like to play basketball? What's your favorite sport to play? That's a fun sport. I like playing that sport too. This was so much fun. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning new signs in sign language and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hi, this is Patty and I'm here at the Sedgwick County Zoo today. And I have a special, special guest for you. Um, normally we talk for a few minutes and then I show you our animal, but today I'm gonna start right off with our visitor. And this is a snake and she is a ball python and her name is Nyoka. Now Nyoka is, we've looked at a snake uh, on here before and the last snake we looked at was a different color and it was much thinner. She's kind of a wide bodied snake. As you can see right here compared to my hand, she is, has got a nice wide body. Um, ball pythons usually get she, to about three to six feet long. So um, probably typically about four feet. And she, as you can see, she's really good at hanging on. This would be something she might do if she were living out in uh, nature is she would, oh, she's gonna come this way. She says, look, you see her? She's just turning. She's got, she, snakes are very muscular. And so she can hold her head up there. See when I move my hand, how her neck and her head stay right up there? That's because she is like solid muscle. She has a big long um, backbone in there. She does have 
uh, bones inside of her, just like you and I do. And she is solid muscle, so she can wrap around. In fact, she likes wrapping around like this because that helps to make her feel secure. Then she knows she's not going to fall. Kind of like maybe sometimes when you like to hold somebody's hand or if you're climbing and you like to hang on to something, it just helps her to feel safe. Now you might notice, I'm gonna turn her around there so you can see how she keeps sticking her tongue out. Um, and she does that because that's how snakes smell. And so she is sticking her tongue out, her tongue picks up little particles from the air, and then she puts it back in her mouth and she has a special spot on the roof of her mouth where it tells her um, what that smell is. So she's smelling, she probably is smelling me and Penina, who is behind the camera right now. So um, now one of the things you'll notice is she is a reptile, so she has lots of scales. Do you see all those little things that almost look like little beads? She has tiny ones here on top, and those are her scales. And then on her bottom, this is the bottom of the snake. You can see her scales are bigger on the bottom. And snakes have special scales on their bottom called scoops and those scales help them to move and navigate. They don't have legs like you and I, so they have to use their muscles and their scales to help them move. Now, um, Nyoka, like I said, she's a ball python, and they get that name because one of the things a ball python likes to do, if she were on the ground, she might curl up into a ball, and if she felt threatened by something that might want to harm her or eat her, then she could put her head inside that ball that she makes with her body and protect herself. Ooh, looky there, she's looking right at you, flicking that tongue, that is awesome. She's like, hmm, she's gonna go right up there and sniff and smell the camera. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. You can get a close look at her eyes there too. Now. You might notice that a snake does not have eyelids because they can't close their eyes like you and I. Um, they have, just like they have scales all over their body, she has a clear scale that covers her eye and it helps to protect it so that she doesn't get dust and dirt and things like that when the wind blows inside of it. Now, she likes to eat um, small mammals, so things like um, maybe birds or other snakes or things like that. Here at the zoo, we feed her some mice and maybe a little bird occasionally. She's gonna come over here. I don't really want her to. She does sometimes, I, I hold her, so she does sometimes slither up my hand, but I don't really want her to go up my arm right now. So I'm gonna turn this right here. Don't let your body slide off there, Nyoka. We don't want you to fall. She's pretty good at hanging on. But anyway, they, they so they, they um, <laughs> she, since she, she's a, she's a constrictor, so she will reach out and catch an animal with her mouth, and then she will wrap around it and um, hold on to it until it's subdued or still so that she can eat it. Now you might notice right down here, my letters, we spelled snake for you today. And I like the word snake because I especially like that this S is curvy and wiggly, just like a snake. And it also, sometimes we think of a snake, they make kind of hissing sounds and that kind of makes that sound too. So we have snake. Miss Patty? Yes. Do snakes have ears? Um, snakes do not have ears per se. They do have, um, let me see, sometimes we can see here, like um, reptiles sometimes have little holes on the side of their head that are function kind of like an ear. Oh, looky here. You can see her nostrils there at the end of her. She really likes that camera. Look at that. Hi, Nyoka. Now, um, ball pythons come from Africa. So originally, and they're common in the pet trade. People often keep these guys as pets, but they can live a really long time. So unless you're really sure, 
that you have, can take care of a snake for a really long time, then probably a ball python is not for you. The other thing you should know is just like people, snakes can have different personalities. And Niopa tends to be a very calm, very, do you see her? She's smelling my hand there. Very calm, very placid girl. But some ball pythons are a little grumpier sometimes. So you um, just want to know that you know when you get a snake you're not quite sure but you are going to be responsible for taking care of it so um that you they don't they don't live here it would not be safe to just let them go outside so you want to make sure that you can take care of that snake for a long time so thank you for joining nyoka and i here today oh she's going to come back towards it or look at you again she says thank you i'm so happy i got to see you today and we'll see you next time Hello boys and girls and grown-ups everywhere. I'm here today to share with you an art activity. Have you ever written a secret message? Well, I'm going to show you how. All you need is a white crayon, a piece of paper, and some water-based paint. So my first step is to take my white crayon and write my secret message. No peeking. I'm going to write all the letters of my message. What do you think my message is going to be about? I think it's gonna be a message to you, my friends at home. Maybe, let's see. I'm gonna draw a pretty line underneath. All right, did you peek? My secret message is all done. So when you are ready to reveal your secret message, you take some water and you choose what color. I'm gonna start with a beautiful red because I think I'm gonna make some rainbow colors here. So I get some red in my paint and then I'm gonna brush it onto my paper and look. It's turning white where I wrote my secret message and the color is staying on the blank spots. So I need a lot more paint. So we'll do some more red. I love the color red. Can you think of some things that are the color red? I think of cherries and a delicious apple. And what else is red? Now I'm gonna use some orange. What do we know that's orange? Have you ever seen an orange pumpkin? Or maybe an orange fruit called an orange. They have the same name. An orange is the color orange. Right after orange, I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow. My yellow is a little bit green because someone got green in it, but that's okay. So I'll do that underneath my orange. Oh, I see more letters showing up. And we get lots of paint on our paper so that we can spread it all around and see what letters are showing up. After yellow, I do green. Green like the grass, or green like a different kind of apple. I've had green apples before, they're very yummy. So I'm almost to the bottom. I think I need one more color. I'm gonna use purple, because I don't have a lot of blue, but I have lots of purple. So on the bottom, I'm gonna put purple. Oh, and look, if you look very closely when I hold it up for you, you can see my squiggly line that I wrote. So I'm gonna hold up my picture and I found the message. I see the letters I L O V E Y O U. It says I love you. Oh, what a nice message. Do you think you could make a wonderful message for your friends and family at home? I hope you get to try it. Well, thank you so much for watching my secret special message with me and have a wonderful day. Bye. Hi Blue Room. I missed you guys. I wanted to share with you about bugs you find in your yard because I think that you would like this. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the red ant. So if you're outside and you see these, don't touch them. What do you think that you should do? Okay. All right. I'm gonna, just for you guys that are ready to have your notebook and you are ready to draw, I'm using what color crayon? Okay, I think you said green, you're right. All right, and then I'm gonna show you how to spell red ant and then we're gonna actually look at some. So that, this is my grass. 
And now I'm gonna write the word red, R. Is that a capital or lowercase? R-E-D, red, what's slipping away? Ant, ah, hmm, red ant. If you see this, I want you to go get mom or grandma or somebody that is watching you. Don't touch them. All right, let's go look. Oh, wow. Okay. Blue room. Look what I found. Lots and lots of fire ants. And the reason why we don't touch them is just like this. If you put your finger down there, they'll start to climb on you. See how quickly they're climbing on top of the stick? And if they reach your skin, they'll bite you. So that's not a good place to play. I don't think we should play here. And if we decide we want to plant a plant, we're not going to use this dirt. I tell you one bug or insect that would we would like to find and that would be a worm. So let's see what else we can find. All right, Blue Room. I'm gonna say goodbye for now, but I'll be back and we'll have more fun. All right, bye. Preschool Unplugged with Head Start, brought to you by Child Start and its Head Start program. Learning activities for our youngest friends. Child Start and KPTS, collaborating to make learning fun.